I'm about to do something I've never done before. So Monica and I are on Ipswich Marina heading off. I mean, we start every video like this, don't we? Heading off for a coffee. We're going for a coffee and I'm about to do something I've never done before. That is a full history check on the Bonneville and also the Fiat 500. I've never done a history check in my life. Whenever I buy a vehicle, I just blindly hope that it's a good one. So I'm slightly nervous. Bonneville, I'm 90% sure it's okay. Fiat, less so. So we'll go and grab a bit of lunch, get a coffee, sit down and go through both vehicles that we own. On top of that, when we get back, I'm going to show you my personal favorite bits of autumn and winter biking gear. That is jackets, jeans, boots, and also gloves. So come along with us. There should be possibly some interesting finds today. genuinely nervous. I'm checking in now with Car Vertical. Monica will probably put a bit of screen mirroring there so you can see what I'm about to do. Shall I check the history of the Fiat or Bonneville first? Uh, Fiat first. Okay. Oh no, do Bonneville first. Bonneville? Yes. Okay, here goes. So, Car Vertical is available in 25 countries and they gather information from a huge range of sources old car auctions, crash reports, um, national databases in different countries, huge amount of different places. I have now put in my registration and it's checking for hidden damage reports, historical photos, other places. I'm now going to click on full report, checking national registries, checking of all the different European countries to see if it's been exported. Law enforcement agencies now being checked. Workshops. It even checks workshops. So if there's been any work done on the car. Dealer networks to see where it's been sold in the past. Insurers databases it's now checking to see if it's ever been an insurance write-up anywhere. Ninety percent done. Okay, I've got it. Okay. Uh, I'll put screen mirroring there, so I won't show you exactly yeah. what I see for now. Mileage, good. No mileage fraud was disclosed. Theft. This vehicle is not wanted as stolen. Accidents. This vehicle was damaged. No. Wow. Hmm. So what does that mean? Big crash. I'll carry on because they sometimes show pictures. I never did a check on the Bonneville when I bought it. I'm just checking. I'm going through. So manufacturer date. Okay, the 1st of Jan 2010, and it was first, oh, that's quite interesting, I didn't know that. It was actually first manufactured, my Bonneville, 1st of January 2010. First mm -hmm. registered was in March, 
It shows everything. First inspected, first MOT. Failed MOT shows that. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Number 10, damage detected, September 2018. Wow, wait. When did you buy it? Was it? April 2019, I think. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Please refer to the damage section for details. Okay. Are there any pictures? I'm checking now. Oh, here you go. Ownership changed. June 2019. That would be me changing yeah, it. That, that yeah. would be me, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was inspected, was inspected. Then you've got my standard ones now with all of the advisories for MOTs. That's already flagged up here. Stolen vehicle check, fine. Mileage, fine. Damage. Don't scare me. What? Yeah. Okay, oh. Uh, so, so damage happened in September. Possible damage type unknown. Unknown, it's been damaged, but it then says write-off below it. Category N write-off. Category N write-off. It can be repaired following non-structural damage. You can use the vehicle again if it's repaired to a roadworthy condition. Wait. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> what? So they repaired it? It's been repaired, but it was a yeah. technical legal write-off. And he didn't mention it, then. did he? No. I'll just see if there are any photos. See, look here, look at the checks. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Advice, advice. The nature of the damage is not known. Ask the seller to provide any additional information. The range of seriousness may vary from scratches to dents and more costly problems. Cool, obviously I didn't do any checks, did I? I did nothing. <laughs> Okay, no pictures of the damage, but it looks like it, it was recorded as a technical write-off. Certainly there was decently serious damage to it. Okay, cool, great. So, good news on the first one. Now should we move on to the Fiat? Let's hope we have some better news there. Great, so that's good. Bonneville, at least now I know it's worthless. That's great. Okay, perfect. Scrap it. Now, are you ready for the Fiat? Okay, yes. I never checked the Fiat either. Okay, right. BJ, BJ 59XZZ, search. <laughs> God! <laughs> Checking. Okay, it's going through the checks. Oh, that's a shock. Mm -hmm. What that means is that, in essence, if I just calm down and process it, there's been damage to the, the Bonneville. It looks like it's actually been declared as a write-off. Wow. Yeah. But there are two, four different factors of write-offs in the UK. There is structural, uh, sorry, there's non-structural, which is the least serious, then there's structural, then there are two serious ones where it can't be repaired. Mm -hmm. The two most serious ones, let's say A and B are here, can't be repaired, forget about it. The least two most serious, non-structural and structural. So, sorry, structural go here. Structural means that there's been ser fairly serious damage to the bike, but it can be repaired. It's legally safe to be repaired. Non-structural means there's nothing structural, nothing wrong with the frame of it. it may just be, for example, the tank's been dented, the bodywork's been damaged, but it's not specifically dangerous. That's where mine sits, at the lower end of write-off okay. level. But it's still a technical write-off. Mm -hmm. And just a few months before I bought it. How does that make you feel? Luckily, I'm not 
precious about my bikes. You know, yes. I, I, I just like using them. I'm not worried about residual values. Yeah. And I'm not planning on selling it. So it doesn't bother me. I find okay. it quite funny, actually, in a way. Okay. Like, because <laughs> it's my fault I didn't check. But okay. it's eye-opening. Yeah. Genuinely eye-opening seeing it. Because if I were someone who, who really wanted the very best vehicle with the best history, well, I'd, I've let myself down hugely yeah. you know because when people go to buy my bike they will now always see this being damaged mm -hmm. for the rest of its life it will always mm -hmm. be a bike that's legally been written off and had damage to it and that will hugely affect its uh, residual values okay one so you can't sell it uh, it won't get as much as I would ever want it to yeah it would definitely affect it uh, here goes especially as I don't know what the damage is mm -hmm. right Fiat view report cool that's good <laughs> first things first on the Fiat the mileage of this vehicle may have been tampered. Good, what? so it could be fake mileage. I mean, it's on 192,000 miles now. <laughs> so what's it going to be on? Wait, like, wait. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. How, how fake can it be? Like, <laughs> over 200,000? What? Okay, it's never been stolen. Okay. No, no data about it being damaged, though. Do you know, it's quite interesting looking at this. I can see... Um, it's been about six years that there's been a suspension issue with it and it's never been fixed. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I've never fixed it. It looks like that's been going on for about six years. Mm -hmm. I can tell here by looking at it that this car has not been well looked after Aww. because every MOT is, has just been failure. Have a listen to this. This is insane. Failed MOT in August 2016. Mm -hmm. Another failed MOT in August 2016. Another failed MOT. They then tried re MOTing it three months later and it failed on an even bigger list of stuff. Mm -hmm. So clearly someone did not have any money and they were desperately trying to get it MOT'd as cheaply as possible. Mm, poor Fiat. Uh, I should say, actually, when I took over ownership, it also failed an MOT on quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> But now it passes every time. Yeah, yeah. It even shows when the vehicle was serviced in a different country. That's, that's from me. Well, th this is weird. I mean, this also shows if there's outstanding finance. Obviously, the car's worthless. There's no finance. Um, there's nothing. This is all fine. All fine apart from the mileage. Mm -hmm everything else fine and it's interesting because it shows mm -hmm. a bit of information yes, yes. on on the mileage mm -hmm. and how how fake it could be so what's the real mileage what do you think <laughs> what? Brother, don't do that that scares me oh my god this is i'm not Stop joking it. okay listen to this listen to this here Mileage, 132,000 miles in 2018. Yeah. The mileage then drops. Oh, the mileage then drops in 2019 to 87,746 mm -hmm. miles. But then it goes back up to 143,000. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, I'm hoping that's just someone put the mileage in as mm -hmm. incorrect because it, they did a 50,000 mile drop. Yeah. But then... A year later, it went up to 143, mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that's just a blip. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's just a blip. Fascinating. Okay, so you can, you can of course, go onto the Car Vertical website. Um, I think prices are different in every country. You can go onto the Car Vertical website, get a history check, and, of course, take my, my foolish advice because if you don't get your cars checked when you buy it or your motorbikes you will end up being like me and that's the best possible advice I can give. I think there's also a 10% discount if you want to check your vehicles on Car Vertical. I'll put all of the details here and also in the written description below for a link. 10% off if you click through my link. Just recover for a bit and then let's go home and I'll show you some of my tips for autumn and winter riding gear. But good news all around there. <laughs> I had to show this as well. It says the, the current market value of the Fiat 500. I'm sitting on a gold mine here. 
595. <laughs> Great British pounds. Oh, and, what's, and what's below it? Um, approximate, approximate price after negotiation. So I have to expect that people are going to come along and try and negotiate that price down. So if I'm lucky, I'll get 565 pounds. Obviously, it's monogram mine, so we'll both share 282 pounds each. So I've just let this sink in. Written off. September. 2018. That's actually, that's quite shocking. I mean, it's funny, kind of, but it's shocking when I see it. Record found written off. The Bonneville has been a legal write-off. Mm -hmm. It's been a legal write-off. And I promise you, this isn't some prescripted thing where I knew. I had no idea. It's the first time I did the, the check mm -hmm. right here on this table. Yeah, so it looks like the previous owner Wrote it off, Wrote it crashed off. it. They repaired it and then sold it to you. Yeah. It's quite shocking. It's very shocking, actually. It just shows the importance of doing these checks. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I feel like a market trader. Part two of the video, my favorite bits of gear when it gets to autumn and winter. All of these pieces I have tested out over the past two years or so. And what's interesting, a good chunk of these bits of gear I've actually had from about two years ago, ever since I started Instagram or YouTube. So, I important to note, I only really keep, because I'm lucky enough to test a lot of stuff, I only really keep the gear I really, really like. So all of these bits I like. We'll start off with the jacket. Triumph, Beck 2. 350 pounds, may not come up on camera, but the quality is just about the most superb I've ever seen on a winter jacket. Removable lining, 95% waterproof, a bit of water gets in here, and pretty good windproofing, but not 100% windproof. This is size large, I'm 6'1 and 80 kilos. They still sell this, and it's a very, very good quality jacket. Next up, so that's 350. Ryden Sons, similar format in that it's wax cotton, removable thermal lining, beautiful classic styling. It lets a little bit more air through than the Beck. It's not quite as heavy duty as the Beck and it's slightly less waterproof than the Beck. So it's not quite the premium level, but you can get this at the moment for about 123 pounds. So value wise and style wise, Feel-wise, it's a superb jacket, but not quite as warm, not quite as waterproof as the Triumph. Lovely looking thing, that size large for that one. Mm -hmm. And it's got the strap across there, which is very, very nice. Okay, next up, the most expensive, 525 pounds, Bellstaff Brooklyn's jacket. You wear this all the time. It's because it's so special, I do, yeah. It's good waterproof levels. I've never tested it in torrential rain, but it is good for waterproof. I haven't had any water coming in at all, although it's never been tested in torrential rain. It's noticeably <laughs> more lightweight than those. It's, it lets more wind in than the Triumph one. So even if it gets down to 15 degrees, you're going on the motorway, you can feel that coldness. So once you get to about four degrees or below, you'll need a lot more than this. But styling wise, it's stunning. I'll put a link in the description below because there's currently a second hand one of these on eBay. No reserve, nine days left on auction. <laughs> you can grab one. I love, I love buying used gear like this online. And is this size medium? Or that large? size medium, yeah, good yes. point. Don't size up. That's okay. medium. The other two are large. If I got large enough, that'd be too big. So medium for me in that. Okay. Next. Next, get ready for this. This is, for me, the ultimate retro winter jacket because it is, you can get this, and I'll include a link, £120 you can get this for. Slightly on sale, but it's available on a few sites at this. A hundred, let me just say that again, and £20. And I have the same one. You've got the same, and you do wear it, don't you? Yes. Garibaldi yes. Heritage Jacket. It's really warm as well in winter. It's perfect. It's superb. It is a size large, so have a look at how large it looks on me. Th that is a mind-blowing bargain. It's not wax cotton. That's textile, mm -hmm. okay? So it's got a zip, it's got thermal lining, it's got lovely styling. The key, and I've tested this in 
zero degrees torrential rain. It is completely windproof and 100% waterproof. You will not get one drop through anywhere on this jacket. It is the best retro jacket with regards to wind protection, water protection I've ever tried. I can ride in two, three degrees in this and not have to put anything over the top at all. It's mm -hmm. superb and I think it's hugely underrated, this jacket. And I recommend this for ladies as well. It's a very good point. Ladies do exactly the same one and it's equally as good. Yes, very good. Go and check that out. Right. So that was size large. That was size large. If you're about my size, go slightly on the larger size because it's Spanish. They may be slightly smaller, the Spanish sizes. So go for a large enough if you're about my size. Now I'm on to waterproofs. Mm -hmm. This is the fuel duster jacket. You put it over the top of your normal biking gear so it's oversized. Mm -hmm. I haven't tested it in really strong rain yet, but it seems to be, to the best of my knowledge from what I've seen, 100% waterproof. Not quite 100% windproof, but it does a decent job at helping to keep you warm when the temperatures get lower. Looks-wise, it's a 10 out of 10. It mm -hmm. looks incredible. It's 115, 150 pounds, but it's limited. So once they're gone, they're gone. So if you like the look of it, grab it. It's the best waterproof jacket, over jacket, that I've ever seen for a bike. And it's out of stock at the moment, so... I don't know if they're going to make any more, so if you can get one, so grab it. So where did it. you buy it? eBay. eBay. Yeah. eBay. So if you want it, don't wait even a week because sizes are going. Mm -hmm. I've tested a lot of waterproofs. Um, funnily enough, the only one I've ever kept, and I've had this 10 years, trousers and an overproof jacket. Look, it doesn't look great. No, I'm not going to lie. It <laughs> looks fairly dreadful, but a company called Vice. Yes. I've tried other ones and they let wind through mm -hmm. so they they are cold and they even sometimes let a bit of rain in mm -hmm. this is 100 percent rain and windproof oh, it looks okay it looks okay 100 percent. so you yeah. can wear this over anything you want and mm -hmm. i've worn this in minus two degrees for the past 10 years and i ride year round this will stop 100% of wind, mm -hmm. that it's, it's superb, it's vice. They now only make it in a one piece, not top and bottom. And how much is it? 60 pounds for the slightly lighter 60, one, yeah. 90 pounds for the slightly heavier one. Mm -hmm. But get one of those because it's amazing to just chuck in your bag uh, and you'll always be fine. If it gets mm -hmm. colder, drops, the temperature drops at night, put that on. I promise you, you'll be roasting within about 10 minutes. Exactly the same for the trousers as well. And it will last a lifetime. 10 years, I don't look after it. It's amazing. The negatives about the fuel, that takes up a lot of space. Monica's mum's just come back. That takes up a lot of space in a pannier, about a whole pannier. That takes up a lot less space than a fuel duster jacket. Gloves. I'll be honest, I've only ever worn these once, but these are lovely from Triumph. They're probably more like autumn gloves, but they've just got that mm -hmm. nice fleece red lining in. I went for size medium and that was actually a mistake, which is slightly annoying. Okay, these are the only gloves I've tried that I find acceptable in winter, both in terms of warmth, water protection, and not so ridiculously big that mm -hmm. you literally need a pannier for them. They're the Gridder GTX gloves from Racer. They're fine up until about six degrees on the motorway or about two degrees going around town. The wind chill will get to you once you get to about 70 miles an hour and it gets to about three degrees or lower. But once you're at about six degrees, even motorway, they're very, very good gloves and they're small. They look good. They're not bad at all. I'd probably prefer it without the, the silver, but they're not bad actually. And mm -hmm. I've had those about two years. They're good quality gloves. Apart from that, I now have always when it gets to winter. They look awful, but when it gets freezing, is that ridiculous? Yeah. Yeah, they don't look good, do they? But yeah. it's easy to get on because they're not individual fingers. Yeah. Only when it gets really cold. I don't like them at all. <laughs> I don't like them. Okay, final thing. Jeans. There's only, well, I've got the strongest pair of jeans I own and the most heavy duty pair of jeans, hood. SK11 and K7. K7 is the non-slim fit. This is the SK11 slim fit. They are heavy duty jeans. And once it gets a little bit cooler, 
They're pretty much the only jeans I wear. I feel like you could pull a lorry with these. They're so tough. Full Kevlar lining, very heavy duty denim and these were black. I wore these all the way through Barcelona. You can see they just start fading and start getting a nice kind of vintage look. And you prefer that? I do, yeah. I really like the slightly aged look. Hood jeans though, they're made to last a lifetime. Brilliant jeans. Right, that's everything done. Um, I was having a... Sorry, say that, Monica. Boots. Oh, God, boots. <laughs> Doesn't even matter with a bike anymore. It's worthless. <laughs> right. These, all three of them, are, funnily enough, some of my oldest boots. They're all about, I've had them all about two years or so, and before that, I couldn't quite figure out my biking style, so I had these big, high plastic boots before that. Um, and I only just managed to recently start figuring out this style that I actually like, and all three of these were some of the first I got, and they're all superb quality, and they're all stealthily styled. This is now being discontinued, but it's a Furigan Melbourne boot. This ranges from 120 to 210 pounds. It's got a zip on this side. It's classically styled, it's stealth, it's got armor there, decent tread, and it's just very, very nicely styled. Have a look online at different sites because they are discontinued. So there's a chance for a bargain there and they'll last a very, very long time. They're really good quality boots. But very dirty. Yeah, they're all dirty, I know. Steel Martin, Euroc, Italian brand. They still make this exact model. It's 220 pounds. You may be lucky and get it for 180 online. The leather is not as thick and heavy duty as the other two, but it's got that beautiful Italian style. Mm -hmm. Real stitching there, and it just starts getting that patina around the toe, which I actually quite like. They're good boots, and they do last the test of time. I've worn those a lot, but there's one pair of biking boots that stands for me head and shoulder above everything else. A lot of you will know this. That is the mighty the mighty TCX mm -hmm. X-Blend. That yeah. is the best boot I've ever tried and I've had plenty of boots coming in at twice the price of that. As simple as you like, there's nothing remotely fancy about that at all. Armour in all of the right places, all day comfort. The, I get rid of boots and I sell them if they're not all day comfort. If they're not all day comfort, I don't want to know. All three of these, I could wear them hiking, jump on the bike and do, do another 10 mile hike, all of them. These are as comfy as anything. They're well protected. They look superb. They've got a very slim line profile, really nice lining. They're, they're perfect. I've worn them so much and they'll last years and years. They've been now discontinued for the TCX X Blend 2. This is the first edition. The number two edition is out. You can actually, if you're lucky, pick that up for about 120 to 170 pounds, or the new edition two is 190. The ultimate for me. And that is, that's everything. Just before I go, I was thinking as I was walking back about the, the fact that the Bonneville is technically a write-off. When I'm looking at a vehicle, this is the absolute truth, the, the first thing I look for, if it's a car or motorbike, has it been a write-off? Has it been written off? Because I'll be completely honest, if a vehicle has been written off and I'm looking at buying, I, I walk away. I walk away without question. It's the one thing I cannot get around buying a, a written off vehicle. So the fact I own one now <laughs> is, is quite something. We'll end it there. Thank you so much to Car Vertical for that revelation earlier in the day. Let me know your thoughts on gear and let me know if you've had any horror stories with vehicle history. Thanks so much everyone for coming along. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you all.